Good good morning. I'm going to be reading scripture. The God of God speaks. He summons the earth from east to west. From Zion, the perfection of beauty, God appears in radiance. Our God is coming. He will not be silent. Devouring fire precedes him as storm rages around him. On high, he summons heaven and earth in order to judge his people. Gather my faith, faithful ones, to me. Those who made a covenant with me by sacrifice, the heavens proclaim his righteousness, for God is the judge. And she's, Shaylee is going to be dancing too. I'm going to be ready. Psalms 50, verse 1 through 6.
don't know. Hallelujah this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Who glory to your name. Y'all don't understand. I watched her from five years old. I've watched that baby just go through much in life and watch her. She has a mother who has Crohn's disease, and she stood and she stand, and all of that comes out when she dances. And I'm just so very proud and so filled up. Amen. Thank you, God. So I want to pray first. Father God, Lord, I thank you. I praise you, God. God, I pray that we're all ready on that day that you come riding in, God. Father God, I thank you, and I thank you for your presence in this place, oh God. Father God, I pray this morning, Lord, for you to just be with me. Decrease lay shell. Remove her, Father. Father God, let me speak your words, oh God. The words that your people need to hear this morning, Lord. Father God, I just ask that you would just be with each and every one of us, Father. Open our ears that we would hear, that we would be able to take it out and apply it to this dying world, God. God, we thank you, we love you, and we bless your name this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. So this morning... You guys got to excuse me. I got to get my glasses else we won't see anything. <laughs> so this morning, I am going to be talking about what are you chasing after in this proving season. So, uh, what are we making, or if we are, making idols, or what are we putting our faith in? Um, I have a story first. Um, there was a young teenage boy that just gotten his driver's license, and when he got home, he asked his father, who was a minister, if they could discuss the use of the car. And his father took him into a study and he said to the boy, I'll make you a deal. If you bring your grades up, study your Bible a little, and get a haircut, then we'll talk about the use of the car. So after about a month, the boy came back and again asked his father if they could discuss the use of the car. And they again went into the father's study where the father said, son, I've been so very proud of you. You've brought your grades up. You've studied your Bible diligently, but you didn't get a haircut. So the son fidgeted in the chair. He said, but I brought my grades up. He said, the dad said, he said, but dad, I want you to think about something. You know, Samson had long hair. You know, Moses had long hair. Even Jesus had long hair. And the dad interrupted him and he said, yes, son, but they walked everywhere they went. <laughs> so, so. The moral of that is, is he was so close, but so far from getting what he wanted. The boy was willing to pay most of the price, but not all of the price. The boy knew what he wanted, but there was a problem. He wasn't willing to go all the way. He wasn't willing to pay the entire price. Most of us today, we know what we want in life. Most of us have goals, we have dreams. Most of us, we want a good job. We want a good salary so we're able to pay the bills. Um, it's just important for us to be happy in that job that we have. And most of us 
say that we want in life for our kids to grow up and be healthy and happy and well adjusted. Most of us want our marriage or our relationships to work. And most of us even know what we want in our relationship with God and the church. In most of those situations, we will do just about whatever it takes to make them work, won't we? So if we'll do whatever it takes to make it on that job or in that relationship, but mm, some of us, when it comes to the things of God in his church, we sometimes allow other things to distract us or hinder our growth. Or when the pressure gets to be too much, we just say, I give up, I'm walking away, I, I can't do this no more. Because, and then decide we're going back to maybe our old life and we get there, mm, don't fit in there anymore and it's just too uncomfortable. So now we're just out there lost. The thing about that is, is that we have to recognize that God wants to continue to elevate us. He wants a personal relationship with us. He wants us to be, he wants to be the Lord over our lives. He wants to be involved in more than just our Sunday. He wants to be involved in our everyday life. I would like you today to just take a minute and ask yourself, is God in control of my life? And if not, who is it or what is it? I want you to think about your life. And when you think about it, I want you to think what controlled your life last week? Was it your job? Was it your family? Was it your kids or your grandkids? What is it just last week that controlled your life? Or was it God? Just ask yourself, what controlled your life last week, just last week? Ask yourself, what did I do with my free time last week? Did that free time include God? How much of that free time last week did you give God? Or was there any? Because we get so wrapped up in the world, I gotta go to work, I gotta go to store, I gotta go grocery shopping, I gotta uh, uh, stop at my daughter's house, I gotta do this, I gotta do that, I gotta do this. It's 10 o'clock, it's time to go to bed. Thank you, Lord, for another day. Good night. That's what's happening in our lives. So when you think about that, are you chasing God? What is it that you're chasing? Chasing the things of the world or are you chasing God? Let's look at Psalms 42, one through five. And I'll give you a chance to get there. Everybody there? Okay. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. What can I go and meet with God? When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night. Why people say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one with shouts of joy and praise among festive throngs. Now, as I looked at this, you can see here that David had one focus. He had one desire, and that was worshiping God for David, for David, his number one priority for his life 
was worshiping and chasing after God. David was in the eye of the storm at this time. He was lonely and he felt abandoned. He was separated from everyone else. Me, myself, I call that the island experience. I don't know about y'all, but in this Christian walk, we all experience that island experience where God wants to keep us to a cell. So he begins to move things and move people so that it's just you and him. He's got some things that he wants to say to you. He's got some things that he wants to break off of you. And if he lets those people stay in your presence, they are used, not knowing, sometimes not even knowing, they're being used as a distraction to distract you from hearing God and being in his presence. So this is why God takes us through that island experience where and it is lonely, and you feel like, oh, my gosh, there's nobody here. I'm just abandoned. what I'm going to do. Nobody love me. Nobody care. But it's God. It's God. And if we would turn our face to chase after him, we would understand why he's pulled us from everybody else. He needs time to pour into us time to purify us like pastor has always said when we're going through that purifying period he's removing all those things in us so that when he's done he can look down and he can see his own face in you now is this a painful experience by all means because when you're dealing with your own stuff it's kind of painful when you have to look at you we can always look at other people. Oh, I see this on you. Oh, did you see that on her, girl? But what about when it comes to looking at yourself? You gotta look at yourself. And God takes us through that experience. But when we're finished, when he's done, then we run even harder. Elevate a little higher in God. So David was in the eye of the storm. He was lonely, he felt abandoned, and was separated from everybody else that were meant as a distraction. David, at this time, his entire life was crashing around him. How many of us have felt we've been abandoned, that nobody cares, nobody loves me? How many times do we go through that? A couple times a month? Couple times, you know. So, when we're in that, we begin to speak out. Oh, I ain't gonna make it. I just can't do this. I, 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 I give up. Uh, and ain't can't nobody help me. Not understanding that there are demonic forces out there, and they ready. They ready like. On your march, get set. Who can get it first? Because what we release out, we can't take it back. We got to be, oh, Lord, I'm so, so sorry. I'm so, I didn't mean that. I rebuked that in the name of Jesus. We have to watch the things that we speak against ourselves. Because a lot of stuff, we speak against ourselves. It ain't other people. It's what comes out of our mouth. That we done put in the atmosphere, and now you thought stuff was crashing. Now it's really going down because of this right here. We have to be careful of the things that come out of our lips. Amen. Instead of speaking, I am more than a conqueror. I, am, I do got to have the victory. I will stay on the path of God. I will keep moving in the things of God. Amen. Can't keep, continue to tear our own self down. When we're in that place, in a storm, we have to be more like David and chase after God. David kept his focus on God. He kept his hope in God. No matter what came his way, he was determined to worship 
and praise God through the circumstance. Chase after God. What is it that you're chasing? I want you to ask yourself, when I'm dealing with my emotions, do I still chase God? Do I go down on my knees in prayer? Do I get my weapon out? You know, your Bible, the, the, the best weapon that there is, the greatest weapon that there is. Do you get that out when you're in that storm? What weapon are you using to battle? To begin to fight against these emotions. The battle is going on here. It's always here. This is where he mainly does things against us is here. In our mind. The battle's in the mind. So... When you begin to fight against these emotions, against the battle that's going on in your mind, it's just as if a burglar came in, thief came in your house at night. If you're licensed to carry, what you gonna do? You going for your gun, right? Right? You, you wake up and there's a burglar in your house, what are you gonna do? You're going for your gun, right? Well, the enemy is the burglar that's coming in to lead and steal your stuff in your mind. You, everybody in here is licensed to carry a Bible. So if you carry that weapon, you're going to beat that war. I want you to ask yourself, what am I chasing in this proving season? Let's look at... Uh, all the things that the world would have us chasing. It could be your job. Not saying that we're supposed to be slothful, because the Bible definitely says we got to work. But the Bible says, be not slothful. But if we're working 8 to 12 hours a day, and have not took the time during our day just to say, God, I thank you. God, I love you. I thank you for this job because it's you that gave me this job, God. God, I thank you for the wisdom that gives me the knowledge to do this job. God, thank you. If it's just God, I thank you. We should be taking out the time on our jobs I don't care if, it's, if you take a five-minute break. There should be a break for God to say, God, I'm thankful for you. Each and every day on our jobs. Because if we don't, then we started to make that job our idol. You done built your little idol. You done built your little altar over here with your job because you here 13, 12, 13 hours a day and giving no attention to the Lord while you're there. And believe it or not, God is a jealous God. That's what his word says. He is a jealous God. So if God begins to get jealous, uh, believe it. He is still in the business of tearing down altars. And he will tear down that altar because what he gives, he can take it away. What is it that you're chasing in this proven season? Is it money? Some people, it's money for them. We've let the enemy tell us that God don't care about our finances and our bills. Bills is due. We might have had the money. I don't know about y'all, but I'm just talking about me. I might have went out and bought that purse last week, and I might have bought them shoes, and then I'm up here whining because I ain't got that money for that bill. But I thought it was cute with my purse. <laughs> but now my bills is due. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. Talking about me. I might have went and got me some hair, you know. Spent four, five hundred dollars getting that hair done. But the rent's due. Well, sir, I'm going to be late because uh, 
Now we lying. We done made up a lie. Cause we can't pay that bill. I'm just this is what this is what's going on. We t we believe that and then be telling other people, girl, God didn't answer. He didn't answer my prayer. I was praying that he paid that light bill, but he didn't answer. God is a gentleman. He gave you the money. You made the choice to spend the money on the material thing of the world. Now you want to blame God because the bill ain't paid. And you're whining to everybody, I need help. No. No, he lets us suffer through that too. I'm, I'm a witness. Suffered through it many times. But I've learned what he gives me for that bill. I'm running to the bill man. Running to the bill man because that's where it belongs. It wasn't the stores. It wasn't, you know, the hair people. It wasn't, it wasn't for them. It was for that bill. So he expects for us to be responsible. He expects for us to live righteously. He expects for us to live holy. This is what God expects of us. And when we begin to do what we want to do, when we begin to work it out in the flesh, lies come in. We got to make up stories as to why we can't pay or why we didn't do. All that the devil was waiting on. He was waiting on you. Because he just sits over there on the side and just waits for a little crack so he can jump in. So we have to be very careful about how we live our lives. So, another thing that we could be chasing after, it could be that man or that woman, you know, um, that we know. And it could be that man or that woman that got that little, you know, they got that little side hustle, you know, um, a legal hustle, you know. But in our minds, we need to get the bills paid. So I love that man. I love him. He loved me. And because I love him and I want his attention instead of seeking the attention from God and knowing that God is the man in my life, then I'm okay with accepting all the dirty money. I take it all in. Not recognizing and realizing that when you take that money in, you're putting a curse over your whole entire household because now you've got that money in your household and you wonder why you got you the one working and you might be making sixty, seventy thousand dollars a year, but you still behind in bills because your house is underneath the curse because you have accepted the drug money or whatever type of money that they've done, uh, food stamps to bring in all this kind of different stuff into your household, knowing that they got it illegally so now you're cursed, and you wonder why everything's going this way. Because Satan is sneaky, so he has worked his way into your household and your finances, and you let him and didn't even know it, because I love him. That's my man. Or to take it just a little bit further, because we want the attention of that man or woman, we will, oh, let me hook you up with so-and-so because uh, they the hookup. So now we ain't getting involved because we just want some time in, in that man's presence. So now we, oh, I can hook you up with so-and-so because so-and-so got so-and-so. Yeah, let me call him for you. Or they then say, hey, baby, I got this package and I need you to take it over here for me. It's all, it'll be all good. And we're willing to pay that price. We're willing because we love them. Not understanding that Jesus died on the cross for us and his love don't come with a price. Don't come with a price. But I love him and I'll do anything for him. And this is how our mind thinks. Not recognizing... When are we going to love God? I want to chase you, God. I love you. Then I'm willing to do anything for you. 
I'm willing to do anything for you, God. If you tell me to go left, I'm going. If you tell me to go right, I'm going. Whatever you want, God. Wonder if we took all of that that we put into somebody who really don't care about us in the first place and put it towards God and the cross. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about, y'all. I've been there. I've done it. I've done it in my life. I, I'm chasing God now. Because Jesus doesn't come with the price of prison. Did y'all know that? He don't come with the price of prison. That man does. Definitely comes with the price of prison. I'm not prison material. I don't know about y'all, but I'm a cry baby. And I am not prison material. Wasn't meant for me. Just wasn't meant. There are some people that walk around and they're like, yeah, I'm hard. I can do that. I did time down in the county. Not I. Not I. Not I. Been to jail one time in my life. And that was enough for me. No, not I. It's good you're hard. Glad. Glad for you. But that ain't my story. It's not my story. So I just want. As you think about it, we always have to remember that the word says God owns a thousand cattle on a hill. He owns all the silver. He owns all the gold. He owns everything. And if we live according to his word and his will, and sometimes it's hard to live in his will to be obedient but the bible says that the path is narrow it's a narrow path but we got to stay on it i don't care if you got to do like this you've got to stay on it and those things the enemy knows what we like he knows how we like our time he knows he knows he knows what you want on him he knows how to make it all look all pretty he knows and he sends those things to us to distract us. And then instead of being on this little path, we done stepped over here, we done stepped back here. And then we wonder like, wait a minute, I was just this high in God. Now I'm down here and I gotta start all over to get back where I was in the first place. So we have to recognize what we're chasing. We should be chasing God daily, daily. Not once a week, not once a month, not just on Sundays. We should have some type of God every day. Every day we should be in his presence. Every day, we should be telling God, God, I'm chasing you. I'm running towards that door, that final door where I meet you and I see your face. And you say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. This is what I'm running after. I don't know about y'all, but I'm running. I'm running. I am running. I'm running. I'm running to the mark. It's like, you remember when you was little? On your march, get ready, get set, go! And you're just off. That's where I'm going. That's where I'm headed. And I can't let nothing distract me. Nothing. I have to pray. I have to fast. Oh yes, I said fast. Fasting is part of discipline. Nobody should have to beg you to fast or, or say, come on. No, it, you should be, yeah, because it's a sacrifice. If you read all through the Bible, they sacrifice in each and every Bible, each and every book that you read. There's something about a sacrifice. And we whine and complain. Oh, I, we got to fast. No, happily fast. Your belly be all right. 
If you like me, it'd be all right. I got a little extra, so it could use a couple of that. But fasting is a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. And we should be living a fasted lifestyle. Shouldn't even be called to a fast. You should, you know your life, you know what's going on in your life. So you should be able to fast and not whine or complain. Or when the pastor calls a corporate fast, we, if God told her, it's called being obedient and doing it. That's what it is. But fasting should be a part of our lifestyle. So I'm about to end because I don't want to be long-winded. But I want everybody to just continue to ask yourself this week, what am I chasing after? Have I spent time in the presence of God? Have I praised and worshiped in my home? Because, see, we're the temple, so we should be able to praise and worship in our home. It shouldn't just be when we come here on Sunday. We should be able to praise and worship in our homes, thanking God, because there are people that don't have what we have, and we whine and we complain. There's people that don't have shoes. Pastor said the little kids over there in Tijuana, they were pulling apart hot plastic. With no shoes, hands burnt up. We waste food. Throw it in the trash like it's nothing. There are people in need of way more than what we are. We are blessed and highly favored. So we'd be grateful and thankful. So if you ain't got nothing else to say, but thank you, God, for giving me what I have for breathing breath inside of me. Just be grateful and watch what you're doing. Make sure you're chasing God, not chasing a man, not chasing the wrongs in the world. You know, our young people, I talk to, I don't know what it is, the calling on my life draws young people to me. And I talk to this young lady and the very things that came out of her mouth she felt like it was normal. It's like, and my child, my grandchildren, my child, tell me that it is normal in their, in their generation. I said, well, when I was growing up, we didn't do that. My boyfriend was my boyfriend. We didn't share, we didn't do none of that. None of that happened. But now today, with this younger generation, they don't mind sharing, they don't mind, you know, the, the music that, that goes in their ears, you don't hear nothing about love. Nothing about love, it's all about who can I hit, who can I beat up, and what am I smoking? That's what they talk about today. That's why our young people, they need us. These young people in this church, they need us. Because the, we're probably the only God that they see. Amen. We're the only God that they see. So as you go through your week, just be sure to ask yourself, what am I chasing in this proving season. So I'm going to give the benediction. Um, we are going to have communion, um, but after communion, if